हेलो फ्रेंड्स नमस्ते एंड वेलकम इन अवर येट एन अदर ब्यूटिफुल एंड इंसाइटफुल एपिसोड ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल टॉक्स टुडे वी आर अगेन विथ आर डे मोस्ट गेस्ट पांडुरंगम निर्मेटा सर आई एम कविता सर वेलकम यू नमस्ते मैम नमस्ते सर हाउ यू डूइंग फाइन सो टुडेज टॉपिक इज रियली वेरी मच इंटरेस्टिंग कर्म योगा इन द इनिशिएशन ऑफ कर्म योगा इन भगवद गीता वॉट वुड यू से अबाउट गीता फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई सल्यूट अवर गुरु जी ब्रह्मर्षि पिता महापत्री जी कर्म योग दिस थर्ड चैप्टर ऑफ भगवद गीता गीता इज ए वे ऑफ लाइफ गीता हाइज कॉल्स इट मिरेकल्स दो फॉलो इट गीता इंफ्लुएंसेस एंड मेक्स ए पर्सन फियरलेस ऑफ फेल्यूर एंड फियरलेस ऑफ डेथ that uh, this is my answer to the brief of bhagavad gita is what bhagavad gita is how does it influence it influences a person free from fearless of failure wow mm-hmm. okay and fearless of death what about bhagavad gita you said mm-hmm. okay so next question gita does consist of many yoga mm. what yoga will play a major role in human's life and what yoga helps spiritual practitioner attain liberation there are many yogas stated in bhagavad gita all yogas can be brought under two main divisions one is sankhya yoga and the other is karma yoga in sankhya yoga is gyana yoga gyana yoga and karma yoga mm-hmm. these two divisions stated okay. all other yogas can be brought under these two divisions so what is the central theme of karma yoga the central theme of karma yoga whatever i have achieved or whatever i want to achieve i am not the door of these two action is done through me not by me this is a central theme of karma yoga whatever is done not by me okay through me i am an instrument only this is a central theme of karma yoga uh, what does karma yoga describe karma yoga describe a few things what the renunciation of work mm-hmm. and what engage of the work okay mm. the importance of unselfish work it describes it describes the law of karma what law of karma is mm-hmm. it describes uh, what perfect self control is it describes uh, the role of lust greed and anger in man's life the importance of swadharma it describes the strength of the soul the karma yoga describes the three fold desires the influence of three fold desires such as tamasic rajasic and sattvic on human kind okay and uh, the what is the duty of lord sri krishna and its impact on the three worlds karma yoga describes so uh, who is considered as a true karma yogi karma means effect of actions right right simply it is karma is display of thoughts and the manifestation of will mm-hmm. okay one who works in the world with the body but keeps the mind attaching to the divine detaching to the result of the work is known to be a true karma yogi who is the first person on this planet earth who shown this Uh, as a true karma yogi so lord shri krishna undoubtedly <laughs> lord shri krishna is a true karma yogi as well as he is a is a man of supreme consciousness right mm. and after him there are many people mm-hmm. our guru patri ji also a true karma yogi definitely mm. definitely patri sir is always like we have learned lot yes. from him and he has given always uh, example of shri krishna so sir what is the first question of arjuna here the first question there are, there are two questions mm-hmm. krishna uh, arjuna did ask krishna the first question is hey krishna you taught me the highest wisdom and now and now you are asking me to fight in the war you are confusing me which is better for me the path of uh, gyana yoga or the path of karma yoga which is good for me don't confuse me or tell me 
this is the first question. Mm -hmm. There are uh, two yogas. First one is Jnana Yoga, the second is Karma Yoga. Right. In the second chapter, Arjuna was taught by Krishna Jnana Yoga. It is the path to attain liberation through knowledge. Karma Yoga is a path to attain liberation through work. Um. According to Sri Krishna, the answer will be, he is an extrovert, he is not an introvert. Right. Jnana Yoga is suited to introverts. Right. Mm. Karma Yoga is suited to extroverts. He is interested in work. Right. Arjuna is interested in work. That is why he is suggesting Arjuna that he should fight in the war. He should do his own swadharma, his own duty that is. That is why imports to do the war. So, here uh, Krishna is showing each and every path to Arjuna. Undertaking spiritual practice, does a karma yogi mm -hmm. or a sadhak need a guru? It is mandatory. Hmm. A spiritual why practitioner so? need a guru. Right. So, why so? I mean, how a guru can show a path? A spiritual practitioner or a spiritual aspirant should clearly know the method, method and the purpose of sadhana or else he will go in wrong direction. Right. That is why a practitioner needs a guru mm -hmm. or a mentor. Beautifully answered, sir. This is really very much important for everyone, for you, for me or for anyone uh, in the journey of spirituality or for any sector. Guru or mentor is really very much mandatory. Yes. Uh, here, what Krishna mentioned, I mean which three worlds he mentioned here to Arjuna? In the 22nd verse mm -hmm. in Karma Yoga, Lord Sri Krishna mentioned three worlds, that is uh, material worlds, one is material worlds, second is heavenly worlds and third is spiritual worlds and he has no duty to do, he has not any duty to do in these three worlds. Mm -hmm. hmm. There is nothing to attain and there is nothing to, lose. to gain. Okay. Hmm. According to Lord Sri Krishna, there is nothing to gain and there is nothing to attain. Only he performs his prescribed duty only. If he does not perform his prescribed duty, there will be disturbance in these three worlds. Okay. Hmm. He says that he will be the responsible for the disturbance of the three, these three worlds if he, he does not perform his prescribed duties. Okay. Hmm. And who has uh, prescribed these duties? Who has written those things for him? Okay. I will ask you the question. What is the prescribed duty of the sun? It gives light. Right. What is the prescribed duty of a river? It flows. True. Rivers cannot expect from us. It gives water. In the same way, trees give us fruits without expecting. Sun also gives us light without expecting. I think it is kind of service. Action is done through them. Mm. There is, uh, ego is not considered here. My prescribed duty is teaching. Right. My prescribed duty is telling the answer to your questions as a guest. True. This is my prescribed duty as a spiritualist, as a pyramid master. This is my prescribed duty to uh, give an interview, to sit here before you to answer to your questions in view of spiritual aspect. This is my prescribed duty. But who has written those things? There is, uh, first we, we find the difference between duty and prescribed duty. Okay. Mm. Duty is, duty has many aspects, but prescribed duty is specified. Right. Mm. Specified duty is right. prescribed duty. What are the three uh, truths of cosmic creation? Okay. In the cosmic creation, there are three truths. Mm -hmm. At first, what desire that comes? Right. Mm. In the middle, what deserve that comes? In the third, what needed for the society through you that comes? These are the three truths as per cosmic law. Okay. Mm. Again, I will explain you. Yes, please. What desire is that comes? What deserve is? that comes. 
what is needed to the society through you that comes. Could you please elaborate like what is the perfect self-control according to Krishna here? Lord Sri Krishna tells about the perfect self-control. A person should control his five senses internally as well as externally. Control five senses externally, but they seek materialistic pleasures internally. This is not good for a sadhak. He will not become enlightened at all. He will not get siddhi. Mm -hmm. He will be called a pretender or a, a fool. He is an hypocrite. Okay. He will not gain spiritual knowledge at all. The person who controls his five senses internally as well as externally, he will become enlightened. So, are they internally connected like both internal and external self-control? Do not seek materialistic pleasures internally. Okay. Be desireless. Be desireless. He can gain spiritual knowledge. He can become enlightened. So, one cannot uh, forcefully control their sense. There should be any automatic process for all these mm. things. If, if we po perform certain you know sadhana or uh, rituals or whatever, the results should be uh, automatic, I believe. We, we do not need to forcefully control our If senses. one forcefully control his senses, it will be dangerous to him. True. Mm. Yeah. It will affect him much. It will be dangerous. He may ruin his life. And could you please elaborate what is Swadharma and Paradharma? Naturally, one has to control his five senses. Naturally, mm -hmm. mm, without right. force. Swadharma. It is, uh, it is better for one to do his own duty. This is Swadharma. Even though it contains uh, faults and defects. Mm -hmm. mm. It is not better for one to do the duty of others. Even though it is perfect, hmm. if one does the duty of others, it is fearsome and dangerous. That is why he should not, he should do his own duty. It is better for him to die doing his own duty, to do his one's own duty. In some cases, people help each other, right? Okay. Uh, for say, on the border. Hmm or at any, any uh, authorized person's responsibility. No, I if, will tell you one example. Right. I am here, right. hmm, I am sitting as a guest here. I should not do the duty of yours. This is my paradharma. This is your sadharma. Even though it is perfect, mm -hmm. but I cannot interfere. I cannot uh, do the duty of yours. I should not uh, perform anchor role here. Well, Even though it is perfect, if, if I am capable, if I can do that, but if I am able to do that, but I should not do it. True. Mm. Yeah. In in some cases we understand, mm. but in certain uh, there are few cases mm. where a person is re not, really not able to do his duty if he is requesting someone or if someone is willingly authentically on requested mood, it can perform. So, if the person is ready to accept someone's help or mm. if someone is offering their help for another person, case in mutual right. uh, agreement it can be uh, In done. that case, it is okay. Right. If there are defects and faults in my own duty, hmm, but I should perform my own duty. That is, this is Swadharma. And next, what is the second question of Arjuna here? The second question of Arjuna is, uh, <coughs> what forces a man commit sins unwillingly. This, this is the second question. Okay. Mm. No. People commit sins unwillingly. Mm. What is the force behind that? So, what it is really very much interesting question. Mm. What, is, what, what was the answer of Sri Krishna there? Lust and uh, greed, these two play a vital role to force a man to commit. Yes, these points are really very much important. One should taken care of. Well. There are uh, six evils that will rule a man, a common man. They are first lust, anger, uh, delusion mm -hmm. and jealous. Okay. Mm. These th six evils right. rule 
and ignorant. The people of ignorant, uh, they will be ruled by these uh, six evils. Uh, with the strength of soul, one can overcome this. So, that strength is very much important. Mm. Here, uh, initially, as you said, this the two points and now the six points, all these are uh, these are called Arshad Vargas. Arshad Vargas. So, yeah. how this, you know, cause sin, how this force to, force someone to do? This is, uh, lust means hunger for something. Hunger for something is lust. Hunger for money, hunger for position, hunger for fame. This is lust. Greed, to have more of something is greed. When these two control it, by man and doing spiritual practice, he can become enlightened, he can aspire, he can reach the ultimate state of supreme consciousness. So, mm. one should be aware enough that what is happening through him mm. or uh, if we are really making any sin, we mm. need to be, we have to just control those things. Mm. So, one should possess, uh, possess a few qualities. Mm -hmm. mm. One should be in non-violent. One should uh, forgive others, one should be generous, one should be praise or appreciate others, one should be in the state of gratitude towards others. So, what are the uh, procedure to develop these qualities? You said if we have all these qualities, we can overcome those negative uh, qualities. It needs to do inner journey. Mm -hmm. One should do inner journey, one should do meditation. Meditation is, meditation is a journey from senses to mind, mind to intellect, intellect to soul. Right. Mm. When one is getting soul visualization, he will be in the state of strength of the soul. Mm -hmm. mm. Then he will be free from karma. Karma does not affect him. Okay. He will be free from bad karma. He will attain the supreme consciousness. He will be in the state of samadhi. He performs what needed for the society. Whatever is needed for the society, it is done through him, not so, by him. So, he helps the world, he helps the society, he does for the welfare of the mankind. That is really very true. Uh, the inner journey as you said and through meditation it happens. Yes, yes. Right. So, could you please differentiate uh, uh, body, senses, mind and intellect as well as soul? How do we differentiate all these things? Okay. Senses are in the lower state. Mind is superior to senses. Mm -hmm. Intellect is superior to mind. Soul is superior to intellect. This is this is described by Lord Krishna in Karma Yoga. Okay. Mm. Mind is superior to senses, intellect is superior to mind, soul is superior to intellect. So on the top <coughs> of soul, on the top of all these things, soul, soul, soul mm. right. Mm. Yeah. The strength of the soul is ultimate. So here at the end. What is the message of Karma Yoga, the entire verse of Karma Yoga? Lord Sri Krishna concluding Karma Yoga, the last word of the Karma Yoga is knowledge of the self. Right. Through knowledge of the self, through the uh, strength of the self, one can overcome lust as well as greed, tamasic, rajasic and sattvic, okay. thaigunya vishyaveda, one should go beyond that. Right. Then he will achieve or gain yogic equanimity. And what is mm. that? Yogic equanimity, equal I. Okay. Mm. Equal minded. Very beautiful, sir. In short, we got lot of knowledge from you. At the end, please give a small message on karma yoga to our audience. You were laziness and ego aside. Your mind, heart, and soul, even to the small acts, smallest acts, this is the key to success in Karma Yoga. Do meditation regularly, 
to ascend spiritually. Meditation means journey from mind to intellect, intellect to soul. Then we can do what kind of karma? We, we can not do what kind uh, what kind of karma we can do and what kind of karma we cannot do. We can understand easily on the road to spirituality for the progress of our own soul. This is the message to PMC viewers. Wonderful sir. Thank you for sharing this beautiful message and uh, describing this entire verse of Karma Yoga in very short span. Thank you so much for Thank coming. Thank you madam. Thank you. Friends, I hope you love this episode. So please like, share, subscribe our channel PMC English. Thank you so much.